We never talked about money, never had conversation about money, never really wanted to ask my parents what they made. And the way I made money uh, growing up was crushing cans and recycling newspapers. You know, so if I wanted money, yeah, I wouldn't go ask my parents for it because I don't know the answer is always no. Can I? No. Can I? I didn't finish the sentence. No. Growing up, were there any members in your family that were business oriented or had a business mindset that you can look to them and lean on them and learn a little bit about business? Zero. Tell us a little about yourself, your background as a young person and, and how you grew up and how it relates to money. Sure, so our, our family comes from the Philippines, so I'm first generation born here, Filipino, and uh, the conversation about money was you don't talk about it, right? Uh, I was raised in the Chicagoland area in a, in a city called the Berwyn Cicero Stickney area, which technically it's a suburb, but if you go there, you don't think it's a suburb, right? It's, it's, it's right next to the city. and. Uh, make a long story short, that's uh, that's you know that's Al Capone territory. That's mafia. That's uh, mafia area. Yeah. So my last name being Sapala, and me being taller than most Filipinos in a Latino, African American, uh, Italian, Bohemian, uh, Polish neighborhood, they can never tell what I was, and so they thought I was dark Italian. Sapala, Sapala, give me a sandwich, Sapala. Right? Just all, all this stuff and. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, you know, we never talked about money, never had conversation about money, and never really wanted to ask my parents what they made. And um, the way I made money uh, growing up was crushing cans and recycling newspapers. You know, so if I wanted money, you know, I wouldn't go ask my parents for it, because I don't know, the, the answer is always no. Can I, no, can I, I didn't finish the sentence, no. Can't have it, we don't got it, da, 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 da. Raise them in a type of language. So if I wanted to make money, I had to hustle and, 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 and get money. Totally understand. I'm from New York City, so I understand the Al Capone reference and everything. <laughs> Trust me, absolutely. <laughs> so growing up, were there any members in your family that were business oriented or had a business mindset that you can look to them and lean on them and learn a little bit about business? Zero. Everybody wanted to say, go to school, get good grades, be a doctor, be a dentist, be an attorney, be an accountant, be an engineer, uh, be a nurse. You know, if you're a woman, a Filipino woman growing up, but it was never, you know, have your own business. It wasn't, you know, uh, set up shop, you know, learn how to sell this, you know, create scale, create distribution, none of that type of life, create, create your own brand, zero. Go get a job. Those words existed. Basically. Zero. Wow, so even in the school system, how would the school system? Same thing. I do credit, however, my two main teachers, which is, I mean, I love teachers. I just think that teachers need to be overpaid in our country, they're just not. And especially we experienced that in Chicago. Uh, land area, uh, uh, area because our teachers are so underpaid and they got to pull money out of their own pockets and the little salaries just to create the supplies to teach a class so so underpaid because they, they deal with their kids um, eight you know six to eight hours a day where while we're at work they're dealing with our kids anyway I do create my two teachers number one Mr. Novak my seventh grade teacher because he taught me you know well, 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 he was a man's man he was like you know we, we, we kind of stood up straight when Mr. Novak walked around he was no bullshit with him right uh, no BS with him and so the, the other teacher was my, uh, my business 101 teacher, which is an elective class in high school. And he, re he told us to read the book from Lee Iacocca and how he turned around Chrysler. And there's a recent movie that's out right now, Ford versus Ferrari, where Lee Iacocca was a very instrumental executive for Ford because he was pitching Henry Ford II on how to acquire Ferrari. And obviously the deal never went through, but uh, just to see his character in that movie and what obviously what he did from not only Ford, but for Chrysler, and if it wasn't really for Lee Iacocca, you know, a good portion of the automotive industry wouldn't be around today. I mean, Ford probably would be out of business, Chrysler would definitely be out of business yeah. if it wasn't for this guy, Lee Iacocca. So I read that book and it, 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 it inspired in me. It's like, oh, so there's more than being a doctor, dentist, and all that, that type of stuff. And, uh, and the reason why I paid attention to that teacher, because he owned a pizzeria, in our in our local town, local city, Michael Anthony's Pizza, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Vice, you know. So when we have birthday parties, we order his pizza. I'm like, oh, so you're the owner of that? So I'm like, okay, so not only am I learning about business, but I'm learning from a guy that's in business. So that's what inspired me growing up.